Hey there, welcome to Farmcraft. This is the propane regulator from my grill. My grill wasn't working right. I checked the burners, they all looked good. So I changed the regulator and that fixed it. Uh, the, the flames were just really low, so this regulator's not working. You ever wonder what's going on in here? So coming off of your tank, depending on the temperature, you're gonna have somewhere around, let's say 150 PSI. My research said anywhere from 100 to 200. The outlet here into your grill is going to be just be like one PSI. So what's going on in here that only allows one PSI downstream reliably? I mean, it's tempting to think that there's just a spring and some kind of valve. Let me think on that. I've never opened one of these up, but we're going to open up in a second and see how this works. I'm just kind of brainstorming here on how this could work. So say this is your high pressure in, high pressure, uh, you're going to have something like a piston with a big surface area on one side and then a needle valve on the other. So say this comes down like that. So the high pressure gas has to get by this needle valve. The other side, say this is your, this is your low pressure chamber here. And when that is at one PSI, it has enough surface area on this piston to overcome 200 PSI against the needle valve. So surface area wise, there'd be a 200 to one ratio there. And then when the gas is released, it, it comes around into, into this area here. So if that is less than one PSI, this is going to push hard enough to open the needle valve. The piston will move that way and it'll let gas in. Once that gets up to one PSI, it's going to be able to overcome that force and it'll move back. So that's kind of what I'm picturing. And I've never opened one of these up. And obviously looking at this, it looks like it's not gonna be arranged in a linear fashion like this, but it tends to make me think there's a big diaphragm here doing what we're talking about. The low pressure side can push on this diaphragm hard enough to overcome the PSI from the tank. So I'm betting you there's some mechanism here that when there's one PSI, it pushes and closes a valve of some kind, preventing any more gas from entering. That's not what happened. All right, so here we are, and this was the low pressure out, this is the high pressure in. Okay, so we have a spring that's pushing the diaphragm in that direction, and the diaphragm is hooked on something. Let's see here. Oh, look at that. So that's, a, that's actuating a needle valve. A little lever sticking out here, that's what actuates the needle valve. We'll look at that in a minute. And that lever just hooks in this hole here. So when this diaphragm moves, that lever's gonna move. When the pressure gets to a certain point on the low side, it's going to push this diaphragm enough that it's going to actuate the needle valve and close the gas flow. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, that's very much like a carburetor float. Carburetor is actuating based on amount of liquid in the carb. When it gets up, it causes a float to float, which closes the needle valve and stops the fuel flow. Now, an interesting aside here, this diaphragm being here with this seal makes a second chamber here. When that's covered, there's, there's a space in here, and this is open to air. There's a little hole right there, down in there. Can you see that? And a hole right there. And it even says, do not block vent hole. The reason for that is because if this was sealed, positive or negative pressure would interfere with the movement of the diaphragm. So that needs to be vented so this diaphragm is free to move however it needs to. So the high pressure has to go by this valve, obviously, to get in. And once it's in, it's going to have an effect on this diaphragm and self-regulate. That is clever. Pretty simple. Let me get that needle valve out of there so we can see that a little better. I don't want to give it up easy. They've just crimped these ears down onto the shaft and uh, there's no easy way to undo it. It's not not made to be serviceable. Yeah. 
Well, that's not what I was expecting. Yeah, I was expecting to see an actual needle valve under there, but there's not. A uh, carb is more um, more advanced than this. This is really just uh, smooth plastic. No, there's something on there. So if you look on the back, there's a hole. And if I push in that hole, you can see that that thing has some give. So that's like a rubber seal. Oh, okay. Yeah, now that I've wiped it clean, it's more obvious. That's ridiculously simple. So this rubber seal pivots on this axle, opening and closing this orifice, which is the incoming high pressure. And the amount of pressure against this big diaphragm, which has a big surface area compared to that tiny little orifice. So that's your 200 to 1 I was talking about. And it may not be 200 to 1, but this area here can overcome 200 PSI at this orifice here. And yeah, it's even got a mechanical advantage because the axle's right there and this is actuating out here. So it's got like a, a lever arm working for it too. Now why was mine not working? I bet there was a piece of schmutz or something in here not allowing proper flow through the regulator because it just it wasn't getting enough gas. The only other thing to show you here is this is the part that was coming in to the high pressure. And listen, there's a check valve in there, or at least that's what I'm assuming it is. I can look down this hole and there is a ball bearing in there. Let me see if I can open that up just to kind of do a cutaway of that. Be right back. So I got it all cut down. Uh, if you look down in there, you can still see the ball bearing. Now this here, came off once I cut it in half and you can see it's splined and those splines it looks like it was maybe pressed in I don't think it was cast in because there was a an o-ring somewhere it looks like there's a couple grooves here that could have held o-rings uh, they went flying off when I cut it so I, I don't have those this is one solid piece there this is the piece with the ball so I'm betting you that this is somewhat of an off-the-shelf check valve part and then this obviously is the connection to a 20 pound propane cylinder. They just press the check valve in and then press it into the regulator, probably with an O-ring on there and proper lubrication, and then that's good to go. That is so that when you disconnect the cylinder, there's now high pressure in this small little area here. I've been calling it a needle valve, but I'm not sure what to call that. Between that actuated valve and this check valve, there'd be high pressure. And if you didn't have a one-way valve there, when you undid this, all that propane would come shooting out. And I guess that's probably considered a fire hazard. Thinking on it, I think even the low-pressure gas could leak out. If there's not enough pressure on the low side to keep the actuated valve closed, then that orifice is going to open and it's going to allow gas to flow from the low-pressure hose all the way out through the regulator if it's not connected to a propane cylinder. Pretty cool. I'm going to recycle this brass. And this, I'm pretty sure, is aluminum, so I will keep that as well. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.